Hello, I'm civil rights attorney Carol Powell Lexing, and welcome to the Carol Powell Lexing Show. My mission is to empower you and enlighten you with knowledge from my 30 plus years of experience in the legal profession. I have been in the legal profession and basically boots on the ground in the trenches for over 30 years. So it's a pleasure to be here today. And normally before I start, I like to give an affirmation. And my affirmation today is for you to love yourself and remember all that glitters is not gold. Today, We're going to dive into a topic I'm sure that everyone is familiar with, and I have a special guest with me today. I'm excited about this guest. He's a Golden Glove board member and international journalist, Scott Orland, joining us for this conversation today. Welcome, Scott. Thank you, Carol. Um, Scott, Hollywood has brought back back this, this case that seems to be the center of everyone's attention now, regarding um, the state of Wisconsin versus Jeffrey Dahmer, referred to as, commonly referred to as the monster case. Can you just share with me, um, basically, why do you think that Netflix brought this particular topic back or resurrect this old case? You know, it's really fascinating because on one hand, I think it's a subject matter that most people find abhorrent if you were to ask them in their personal life, do you kind of want to deal with this or have conversations? They don't. But there's a safety factor like going to a horror movie or watching these type of cases unfold on television, you know, like Dateline will sometimes have it, where they get to have the comfort of their home, but kind of peek in and be a bit of a voyeur Mm -hmm. about what's going on. Right. Well, I'm just trying to figure out why is this case why is it able to stay on the radar? Well, I think there's always a fascination in something that's so larger than life. Um, you know, it, there's a paradox with this because obviously on one hand, you don't want to give this man any more fame or of course not. Uh, interaction with the, the world than needs be. But if we don't learn from the past, that I think there are important lessons in, his, in watching this story not necessarily what was done right, but what was done wrong. Right. Because too many times we think like, it's like going to a game. I'm watching the World Series now and, you know, batters, uh, you know, but God, they put their hand down one inch. They do it wrong. They have to watch the videotape and then they understand this is why I need to do this. And then hopefully they'll become a better player and pick up. And I think the same thing applies with this. Right. And you're absolutely right, because I see how the system fail those families with allowing this monster to murder, uh, go on a murder spree for 13 years. And it's like, what about the families that complain about their loved ones? What did the system do? What did the police do? Why didn't they ever... You know, catch him before he goes on a 13-year murder spree. I mean, this case, I guess, piques the interest of people because it's like, okay, it's the same things are going on now with the system failing the people. Because, as you know, Jeffrey Dahmer was out there uh, murdering um, brown and black people and... um, and, and it was atrocious. So I guess the, the interest is because nothing really has changed in the sense with the legal system. It's, we, we see a broken system back then, and we still have the same broken system today. Look at what just happened. I think it was yesterday with the Parkland shooter, you know, the school, that they decided not to give the death penalty to the, uh, the, the guy. And what, it, what I saw on social media was people were like, I don't want to say this person's name. Let's say the names of all his victims. Right. These are the people we should remember. Why are right. we remembering this guy? So right. I think that's kind of interesting. Right, right, right. It's important to remember the names of the victims because you have the system that pretty much failed the victims. The same thing. The well, I know there, there was a lot of pushback that's been going on because people feel very frustrated that the victims were not necessarily involved as much in the production of this and to get their story and if anybody has watched the 10 episodes there are several instances where the families are going why should they be profiting 
why is his like when his father was doing the book or uh, when Jeffrey was doing stuff in prison, he should not be profiting. He should not be making any money out of this. Right, right. But it was amazing to me. You had people sending this monster money while he's in prison. You had people that were trying to capitalize off of his uh, glasses and his um, whatever he had <laughs> and whatever his grandmother had. And they are selling that as as of today's date on eBay, which is crazy. And um, we don't ever want to um, make killers heroes. What we need to focus on, like you said, are the victims. And we also need to focus on the system that allow this monster to get away with murder for 13 years. I will say that in watching the show, kind of to picking up on one of your points, the most poignant episode for me was, and again, I sadly I cannot remember some of the uh, victims' names, but he was the uh, the deaf student, I the deaf that, guy. And I think that hit all. That was so beautiful because you really got a chance to feel for somebody, and you right. got a chance to kind of explore this life of of what what was taken away. Right, right. And, and the sad the sad thing about it, after looking, of course, at the movie, is that this victim, this young man. He was looking for love. He was looking for a partner. He wasn't looking to get murdered. And that that touched me. That that really touched me. But see, that's why I think in a, in a strange way, watching these shows is beneficial. Right. Because it, it, it puts out a little warning thing. Is there's, there's a naivete that some, some of us probably have as we venture out into the world. Right. And I don't think that we need to be jaded, but I think that we need to be aware. It's almost like coming to a cross signal and looking both ways. Right. That too many times we don't. We think, oh, we know what's coming. I don't hear a car. I'm going to walk across. Right. And we're kind of led to believe, well, this seems to be a nice person. This seems to be. Right. Not but necessarily. People show you what they want to show you. That's right. And that's why I started off saying all the glitters is not gold because you had this monster out there. And then you had these poor victims that, you know, their their idea of getting to know someone and his idea was he's planning to kill them and eat them and do God knows whatever else he did to them that never came to life. But all we know is what he did um was terrible and, and everything that came out that Jeffrey um, that this I'm not going to call his name that this <laughs> monster did you know was atrocious what angered me the most about uh, the uh, monster story is how the judge was so lenient with him he said he didn't want to ruin his life when this man has been charged with sexually assault of a young man and he later comes in and murders his brother. But at the hearing, the sexual assault hearing, the judge basically is like just slapping him on the wrist and saying, okay, you know, I'm not going to ruin your life. So that in itself shows that the system needs to change because we have the same thing back then. We're having the same thing now. Only select number of people are allowed to um, be free or not go to prison or jail while other people have to go to prison or jail. It's a very selective met method that's going on with the legal system. And I don't call it the justice system because justice is only good as the people that you put in place or have in office. Well, it seems fascinating, too, that if you kind of dissect it, it's thinking, how does the judge know the future path of this person. If they've just been accused of a sexual assault, right. I think, hey, I'm gonna let you off because I think you have promise. Right. To me, know what you just did showed that maybe you don't have promise, that there's a little red flag. But again, we just saw it recently, a couple years ago, was that incident in Northern California where I think it was a college student yeah. where he, it was a, an attempted rape or an actual rape and the judge, because he was a lacrosse player, some sports player, he thought, oh, no, you have such potential that, you know, right. you can kind of, I see a future for you, so I'm going to be lenient on you. And I thought, well, you're not being lenient on the victim of the poor girl that just went through this horrific, violent act. Right, right. And and see, that's why you can't call it a justice system when you have people like that that's choosing who's going to go to jail and who's not. But they only choose in certain people to do that. 
And we saw that in this monster case. Had the judge um, sentenced him or found him guilty and sentenced him, the judge may have saved a lot more lives. I love how you talked about the differential between justice and legal. Because oh, yeah. so many times, and I've heard it said that when people are about to have a case or to take something, they go, well, it depends which judge I get. So it's like, well, it shouldn't make a difference because it the shouldn't. law is the law. So it shouldn't make uh, who cares who is actually interpreting it because he should follow the rules of that. But it's up to that individual. Right. Like I just said, to interpret. Right. The to law. interpret the law. It's an individual thing. And you're right. Judges should follow the law. But sometimes some of them don't, and sometimes some of them do. And I have to give credit to those that are trying to make it a justice system, that's trying to, um, you know, dish out fairness to everyone. But in this monster case, that didn't happen. So I'm, I'm wondering, you know, whether or not that particular judge was remorseful about what he did because he should be because he could have saved the lives of other people had he just convicted him, found him guilty, sent him, sent him to prison rather than giving him a slap on the wrist. Well, that's what I think that so many times when you watch a project like this, because you look at the police had so many opportunities yeah. when Jeffrey died, the scene in the car where he has the trash bags in the back seat <laughs> and had the policeman who stopped him actually did a search to see what was... And that was on, early on at the very beginning, and he would have he would have discovered the severed body, and he didn't do anything. He goes, "Wow, you're so young. You have again, you have career potential. Right? I'm going to let you off, you know." But how many times are I guess other people? When I say other people, I mean black and brown people not given that opportunity. They're just not given that opportunity, and it just seems like they. When I say they, I mean. See, the system starts with the police and the criminal justice system. It starts when you get stopped, arrested, sent to the DA's office. They decide that they're going to um, charge you with a crime. And then, you know, you go to court and the system is on. This is rolling at this point. In, in the Monster case, he never, <laughs> up until after he had basically murdered a few people, that he got charged with sexually assaulting a person. And to me, that was just, that just blew my mind. I'm like, well, why is this particular man being allowed to have all these opportunities? And he goes on a murder spree. I'll, I'll share with you a story <laughs> that I had nothing to do with, but I remember I came home once to my house and there was an aroma that literally I did not want to venture further into my house, discovering there was a dead possum <laughs> in my basement and it basically was rotting away. But that odor was so prevalent. So when we have the experience of Glenda, the next door neighbor, right. talking about this powerful aroma, I, it's, it's not something, you know something was deteriorating. You, something you, you was, know it wasn't going just, on there. It wasn't just pork chops riding right, in the it refrigerator. It wasn't bad meat or something. It was something going on. And that was another instance, too, where the police, Dropped whether the they didn't want to hear it or they didn't want to understand it, I'm not sure. But you would think that law enforcement are trained to know the different smells because – from my understanding, there is a very distinctive smell regarding the death of a human being versus a possum or, or bad meat, bad pork chops that he kept telling people they sent him some bad pork chops or some bad meat. Um, you would have thought law enforcement would have been able to distinguish that particular odor. And that brings me back up when you mentioned, um, speaking of aroma, with, with the next door neighbor Glenda. That angers me, too, because they didn't even take the word of this woman saying something is wrong with my next door neighbor. Bad things are going on. I can I can feel it. You all need to investigate. They they pretty much just kind of blew her aside and they blew her aside because of the neighborhood she lived in, because she was a black woman and they just didn't really. um at that particular time, poor people didn't matter. 
So that's why the monster was able. In fact, he strategically placed himself in that uh, neighborhood, in a disadvantaged neighborhood, so that he could prey on people. And, you know, that, you know, we can sit here and talk about this all day, but it still goes back to the system failing the victims. I can only fathom what the outcry must have been like with these families at the time. You know, now, in some instances, it's made to be the person just disappeared or they weren't sure where they went because there were no bodies for them to kind of, you know. That just uh, wrote them off as missing people. Yeah, of, of what to do. And But you realize, too, is where the system again failed is, I mean, because we watch Law and Order and we see these crime shows where somebody, this detective, wait a minute, I'm starting to see a pattern here. Right. And you realize, didn't anybody there see a pattern? Wasn't there something right. that, wait a minute, why are all these people, after after three or four, Right, you and in the, in the same something. area, it's not like he moved around. You would think that they would recognize that there's a pattern here. We have all these missing people. Um, something is wrong. But the pattern, like you said, involved people of color, involved LGBTQ community, mm-hmm. people that are not only marginalized, but over overlooked. Right. And that... Why pay attention to uh, why pay more attention to them than we have to, which is so sad, right? Frustrating, right? And ang- makes one angry, right? And and we see that today. We see that today with all the police killings. In fact, I do what I do for a living, I'm representing families that have been, you know, killed by the police because they don't, don't value uh, black and brown people's lives or poor people's lives. And um, that's what we basically saw in the monster case. But I, I want to follow up on what you said because I thought it was great with the next door neighbor, which technically, if you peel back the layers, Glenda was not the next door neighbor. She actually lived across the street. Okay. Uh, there's an amalgamation of characters. That there was another woman who did live next door. Okay. Who was kind of doing this. But to me, it's the power of one. That right. was the beauty. When you see that with Nisi Nash, who I have to say I love as an actor, I did not know that was her when I was first watching the first two episodes. She did and an amazing job. And someone goes, job. wasn't Nisi Nash? I go, which one is she? And she's like, that was <laughs> and So bravo to her for this immersion in, in, a, in a character. But that to me is what needs to be celebrated is the power of one. She did not give up. She was relentless. Right. And that sometimes it is those people that need to be celebrated. Absolutely. Absolutely. And um, unfortunately, I don't know if she was. Uh, I know they were trying to um, what set up a park after they tore the building down that she was facilitating, but I don't know if it ever came to fruition. Well, I, I think, too, some communities, they do not want to remember. That is what is fascinating to me about history. And that's what, again, I think is a positive about this is sometimes we as a society are so susceptible f- to forgetting that when you watch, whether it's documentation of atrocities during war or with civil rights cases or with just human versus human, we forget what people are capable of doing and that these memories bringing people back going, wow, how could we let that happen? And as you said, you have to be careful we didn't just let it happen. We are continuing to let it happen. So it is up to us right. to be the Glendas in right. our world and our community to point things out and to say, hey, what is this? Which, you know, people were doing a lot, like especially after 9 11, you mm-hmm. know, where people were right. s- report a suspicious package. Well, then it got so crazy that it went the other degree, the New York case of you know the jogger and the woman who was bird watching oh my and, god like, why was he jogging in central <laughs> park you know but that's what people do right 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 it it, it, it went kind of left <laughs> and still going a little left um but I, I i guess i'm curious um do you know if there will be any legal recourse or or any type of um what's the word um restitution for the families as it relates to what he did for this. I know the statute of limitations probably definitely have run for them to take any type of recourse. Well, I don't, again, I could be totally wrong, so I'm not really sure about this, but, you know, I don't think anybody in the Dahmer family is making any financial gain out of this. 
right. you know, uh, whether it's any type of exploration that people make, like when they just did the Marilyn Monroe, the blonde, I don't think her family gets right. anything using her image. You mm-hmm. know, I think there's public record in which they tap into. But there should be some type of acknowledgement, which I think there was at the very end about, which I think Ryan Murphy, who put this together, and, you know, I, I think he, he handled it very sensitively with some of these families, you know, about what to do. I can only fathom, though, if I was one of the families, do I want this told again? Do I want this? You it, know, because you have to go through the pain. Right, you keep having to relive. Right, but hopefully, very as painful. I said earlier, it's that the next generation sees what is potentially out there, and maybe it will cause that one person to pause for a second before they just blindly right. accept an invitation to somebody. Right, right. Hopefully, hopefully we all have learned, uh, we're still learning, um, and and we unfortunately had to learn from this monster <laughs> about our... Um, about our system but but doesn't it scare you how many other monsters must be out there that we just don't know about yeah (laughs) it it definitely scares me Mm -hmm. it scares me um you know there was a scenario down in louisiana um but i won't relive that it's it's because it happened to a very close friend it was a situation almost like this but there was a serial killer um, loose in louisiana called Derek todd lee and i hate to I really hated to bring his name up, but he was on the loose like that, but he got caught. And hopefully he's riding in prison today. But um, I tell you, uh, this this monster case, um, everyone from, I mean, I flew from Louisiana to California and everyone's talking about it. I, can over, I overheard conversations at the airport <laughs> with people talking about it. And just yesterday I was on the elevator someplace and they, they were talking about whether or not they were going to continue to watch what's going on um, with that series. First of all, I'm a little disheartened right now to know that you flew in from Louisiana and you don't have beignets here for your guests. <laughs> oh, but that's just another story. that We'll, we'll get into me. that on another podcast. <laughs> Forgive me because actually I flew in from New Orleans. <laughs> I have the best it beignets. It gets worse. It gets worse. <laughs> it gets worse, huh? Next time I will remember. I will remember that. But um, do you think that the Dahmer case, I mean the Dahmer Netflix series will be nominated? Um, I definitely think there's going to be critical attention paid to it. You know, there's a myriad of different organizations from the Emmys to the Golden Globes, as we mentioned, to other, the you know, uh, that the Screen Actors Guild to pay attention. And you, you have to look at, especially some of the performances we mentioned, Niecy Nash, who yes, was yes. so incredibly brilliant at what she did, and Evan Peters. Yeah. There was such a subtlety to that performance. I mean, I'm such a great admirer of his work because he's fearless as an actor i think if you watch the stuff he's done whether it was american horror story or mayor of east town you know, that he's doing he's th- there's a subtlety to what he does you know a lot of people are grand with their gestures and he's mm-hmm. very internal very it's, creative to me, it's very riveting uh and that's where you saw the power of this monster you know in wow. the subtlety you're I right think if he was if they would have shown a lot of the violence if they would have shown the madness of that it probably could have been dismissed a lot more it was scarier to watch because this is your next door neighbor right and he was so um what's the word for it so um calm and cool and friendly and but yet very cynical and destructive animals. Well, look at the one of the toward the end, the episode where you I, and again, I had to go back and Google some of this stuff like the Gacy. And I was like, I you know, I remember the name, but I don't remember oh, the details yeah. and the parallel of what was going on, but the cold-heartedness of what people do, the destruction, and it's like what is it, what's their internal turmoil? You know, where does this come from right. to be able to be able to do something like that to another person? Or, or even an animal, which I get very protective of as well. Um, right, it, right. It, It's fascinating to me. I, I don't, I think we need to examine them and pay attention to them. But like you said, I do not think we need to glorify them. Never, never glorify them. And um, I guess another thing that's intriguing with this case is that the parents 
of the monster. Well, the dad, he just kept, you know, just kept encouraging him, <laughs> you know, to uh, dissect animals. And it's kind of like you don't know if that thought was put in his mind when he was doing his taxidermy stuff or he was just a little child that was that was um well it started the very first episode with a mother while in her pregnancy was taking all that medication you know and right. you're thinking oh my god nowadays you know you don't even want to have right. you know rum candy because the alcohol content of that could somehow affect the bloodstream right so can right. you fathom what happened back in the 40s and 50s and the 60s of what they allowed women to intake mm-hmm. not that that's a defense i think to sit there and say oh it's because of the medication i think we can all agree there are bad seeds yeah you know and, and that's like was why there are rabid seed. dogs you know there's some dogs that are right. great and others and and he was just a very very bad seed that the dad did not want to acknowledge at all at I, all but it must be tough for a parent to yeah. have to look at your child and know oh they know what they just did and to right. accept that. But, you know, you see other parents and or how many times were kids have turned in their parents where they discovered it. And who was it? The, one of the uh, was it the bomber, the Unabomber, his brother turned him in. Mm-hmm. You know, that sometimes family has to be the one that steps up because they have a little more information than everybody else has. Right. Right. And I believe um, the monster dad had a lot of information, but he was in total denial, total denial about the propensities that his son had and was what he was doing. So I tell you, um, as we move forward, <laughs> lesson well learned. It was a great series. And in real life, hopefully we all can apply um, some of the things that we learn. Um, and that is to basically stay on the people that you put in office to make sure they are held accountable and to make sure they are treating everyone fair and not a certain demographic. So what do you think? Well, no, as you say that, it, it's so funny. I, I remember years ago, I got a traffic citation and I went and I was going to oppose it because I thought, well, this wasn't right. It's not what they said. And I went up there and I had photo evidence and all this other stuff. And the judge, the officer was present, said this is what he did. And so I stood up. Well, I have evidence because I'm not interested. Guilty. Wow. So it didn't even matter. And right. I thought, wow, OK. You know, and I was a few years younger. It didn't even matter. In other words, it was the word of this person was more Versus valuable your, than mine. Your, and I didn't right. even have a chance to present evidence to support Right. Where I was coming from. And so I looked at, oh, my God, this is just small <laughs> little microcosm of, of where it is. What happens if there's a real serious thing out right, there? Right, right. And, and, and that right there shows you where the mentality of this judge uh, state of mind. And basically, you can probably see a pattern of his rulings in favor of the police. So, yeah, this 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 particular case just reopened a lot of um i guess a lot of um things that's going on in this country this today mm-hmm. well the great thing about this case is that the monster got 999 years and i think he only got to uh live after he got convicted of what a couple of years before he was um taken out in prison and the bad thing is that the police officers who did not do their job, who basically turned a blind eye to everything that he did, they got celebrated. And I think even in the series, it showed them harassing the um, the family, the Asian family that Jeffrey, uh, uh, that the monster, I just call his name, that the monster had sexually assault one of their children and it actually killed the other child. They, the series showed that the police were the ones that were telling them, making all these racial slurs and anti-Asian comments to go back where you came from. They got celebrated. And they got back pay. Worse. <laughs> For the time when they were uh, you know, put on suspension. And then I think one of them, 
again, I'm trying to remember statistically, went on to be elected like chief of the police of oh my of the god area too. Um, <laughs> oh my god, I, I, that's one of the frustrating things. Look, I, I think there's any ask anybody. God forbid, there's an emergency. You want the police around? That yeah. you know, we need the police. I think they're an yeah. incredibly important entity. But as with any organization or any system, sometimes people abuse the power that they're given. And it's uh, frustratingly, we kind of put a blanket over everything. And I think there's amazing men and women out there as awesome police people doing it. Right. And, right. you know, I have personally experienced in the past year and a half what happens when two or three people do something bad and they throw a blanket over everybody mm-hmm. and say, well, you're all this. And it's like, well, no, no, it's not. But what it does is give you pause to say, okay, what made them think that? How can I go and try and change the impression? And I would hope that maybe this could be a cause that people would want to go out there and not and help reform. Right, right. Well, what about here we are 30 years later and people are saying defund the police because of bad apples getting celebrated. Terrible wording because I don't think defunding is what we should be doing. Restructuring, I think, is a much better word, <laughs> word to use because, I, I, like I said before, I believe the, there's an importance to a police department, a fire department, and for public safety. About, of uh, But there, if there's abuses in the system, then that needs to be restructured. Right, and I agree. Well, Scott, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, I tell you... Uh, I think we had a great conversation, and hopefully we were able to um, put a little nuggets of um, out there to help people uh, think about and at least voice their opinion if they see things that that they don't feel comfortable with or bad things happening, that they will continue to be relentless like Ms. Glenda was in the monster case, and um, hopefully it will be a better world. Well, Carol, I appreciate it. Thank you for letting me come in here and have a conversation, which I'm a huge advocate of. I think that sometimes if we sit down and have conversations with people, right. we can solve a lot of problems. And but I sometimes agree. people don't want to talk. I know, unfortunately. And we, we end up back in the same, um, I guess, dog chasing tail situations. But or Maybe they want to talk. They just don't want to listen. I think part of having a conversation is talking and listening. I agree. I agree. Well, thank you for joining us today. Remember to check out my website at carolpowellaw.com. And remember, knowledge is power and that your voice has power. 